Hello there, Maverick Traders. This is Imri, and I'm here today with July 7th Currency Market Roundup. Well, it was a lively session today, uh, and there's a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. So the equity markets continue to rebound uh, surprisingly, in my opinion, I'll be honest, I, I thought that last week, you know, we had a very bearish uh, close after testing one of the moving averages and uh, the markets defied my personal expectations. So let's see what we're going to get. But the rebound wasn't limited just to equities. We also saw cryptos and commodities and um, risk on currencies appreciate as well. Big news in crypto world. And I'll be talking about that a little bit later. First up, we have the S&P. So you can see here, uh, there's this parallel channel that I've been tracking for quite some time. Now, yes, the action in equities does look quite promising, but we're approaching a danger zone. We're trading between the short and intermediate term moving averages, the 20 and 50 period daily moving averages to be specific, and we're approaching the upper boundary line of this parallel channel. So I think between here and, and, and 4,000 in the S&P is gonna be very stiff resistance. It's gonna be a very interesting test for this market uh, to see what it can do. Um, until we can break out of this channel and hold above it, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be cautiously, very cautious about, about trading the S&Ps to the upside. The World Stock Index, I mean, geez, I've had this uh, support resistance level on my charts for a long time coming in somewhere between 86 and, and 88. Um, I have that gray shaded box on the price chart here. So we're testing the resistance once more, and we're also testing the 20 period moving average. So we'll have to wait and see how the market reacts. Uh, I, I mean, we can see here back in June, how we traded above this resistance area, poked our head above it, and then broke sharply lower. So I wouldn't be surprised to see us try and make another run through that level. Um, we'll just you know we'll just simply have to wait and see i don't think volatility is necessarily over yet uh there could definitely be another shoe to drop uh so be very cautious as we trade into those resistance levels even further and then over in cryptos this is very interesting you know you know we've we've uh We've basically broken above the 20 period moving average but there is still a lot of wood to chop you know i i mean 2800 to about 3100 in this bit uh, cryptocurrency basket is going to be incredibly stiff resistance now there is quite a ways to go before we retest uh, that broken support level so i i am cautiously optimistic on on cryptocurrencies i'm very interested to see whether or not this rally can hold and i, I can't believe i'm saying this it's the first time i'm saying this i think all year but i'm cautiously looking to buy crypto on dips depending on the chart setup uh, so that's something we're going to explore a little bit later. I'm going to give the market a flat zero here. Uh, yes, the moving averages are slope lower, and we're trading below the 50, uh, the 50 period moving average still. But, you know, I mean, we, we've closed higher about four days in a row now. Let's see if Friday can make it five off the back of some very important economic news events. So Friday, we've got, of course, the FOMC um Sorry, uh, on Friday we have the non-farm payroll reports, uh, which will be absolutely essential to, to how the session and possibly, you know, the rest of the summer is going to trade. Um, you know, this could really set the tone for at least the, the remainder of the month of July. And, and then, of course, over in Canada, we have the Canadian employment change and unemployment rate numbers coming out as well. So I am expecting fireworks tomorrow. Moving on into currency analysis. Uh, so first up in cryptos, you know, I mean, great day right across the board. Bitcoin uh, was the outperformer, but really all the main margin, uh, main major market cap cryptocurrencies have really outdone themselves today. So that's encouraging. And we're going to take a closer look at the crypto basket when we take a look at some potential trades in just a couple minutes. Over in currencies, this is what I like to see. I like to see uh, some currencies strongly outperforming and other currencies being quite relatively weak. So, you know, Boris Johnson, <laughs> his political future is pretty much uh, pretty much over. He's resigned as the conservative leader and it remains to be seen when he will resign as prime minister. Uh, British pound held up just fine. 
you know, I don't I, I don't think that's really a news event that's going to cause much volatility for the pound. Uh, on the back of an excellent day in commodities, uh, the Aussie was a clear commodity currency outperformer there, followed by the Kiwi and the Canadian dollar. And then on the downside, the Swiss franc and, and the euro were the big losers, followed by the yen, and then finally the dollar. So that's more or less in line with what we would expect to see during a risk on period in equities. So coming across, uh, so, so when it comes to velocity scores, I really like the idea of pairing the Aussie and, and the pound against the euro and the Swiss franc and possibly, depending on tomorrow's trading, against the dollar and the yen. Not much more to say there. Um, all the cryptos, lots of good positive velocity there as well. So now let's take a look at some possible trades here. So first off, I've got the cryptocurrency basket and that is a rough sell off there. One thing that's interesting, however, so here we have three distinct legs to this sell off. Now there is a technical pattern known as uh, the three drives, right, which basically looks to see where there is a point of equality between uh, between these these two legs. This leg here, this is the uh, counter trend corrective rally, and then we have another leg lower. So the point of equality, as you can see, does come down, cut does come in quite a bit lower. Now that would be my preferred landing spot for cryptos, and it is possible that we still end up there. Uh, but as you can see, we have found support on this Fibonacci extension level, the 76.4% extension level, hence the current bounce. Now, if I throw some moving averages on there, you can see uh, from a mean reversion perspective, you know, we've broken above the 20 period, like I said, and we're possibly going to be testing that 50 period as well. So we have the makings of a possible, at least short to intermediate term bullish power reversal. Look at that. We broke above on the four hour chart, the both moving averages, retested it as support, and now we've got a bullish cross. So I will cautiously say, look for potential long opportunities on dips, provided that the right technical setup is there, okay? I would also really wanna see us clear this resistance level, which is uh, possibly going to be tested and broken later today in overnight trading, all right? So be very cautious. Cryptos are still in a downtrend, but given the recent surge in bullish velocity, there might be something there if the right kind of opportunity establishes itself, right? Looking for bases and pullbacks primarily. Next up is the dollar basket. Uh, so the dollar basket is really interesting to me, okay? I've got this gray shaded resistance area. We have sold off hard from this area in 98, 2002, 2008, 2009, uh, and we briefly poked our head above it in 2020 before we collapsed. And we're trading right back in this zone here again. So this has been historically a very important level in this dollar uh, index. Okay, so in the, in the dollar basket. Add to that the fact that we have some significant bearish divergences forming in my two favorite momentum indicators, the relative strength index and the MACD. And there is the potential for some, uh, for a reversal here. Now, I do not like to try and pick tops and bottoms. So given that we have a very important economic event on the calendar tomorrow, it's possible that will give us enough of a surge lower um, that we have the initial makings of a bearish power reversal. If we get that reversal, there's so much downside to play for, all right? I will not be in a rush to short the dollar, especially when it's been in such a strong uptrend, but I do believe we are nearing the end of that uptrend. Time will tell whether it's going to end tomorrow or not, okay? Um, so I really would want to see a clear trend reversal. I would want to see lower lows and lower highs on an hourly or even four hour time frame. And then I'd want to see that bear market rally that could then be sold, okay? So we're, it's early days, right? I understand that this update is for tomorrow, but given the non-farm payroll report being announced tomorrow, I just wanted to put the dollar on your radar. Next up is the yen. Uh, okay, so you can see that the yen did have a little bit of a bullish surge and it's caught between the moving averages. Um, you know, the, the yen is still definitely in a downtrend. And if equity markets continue to rebound, then I would expect the yen to ultimately get sold again. Um, to play this on the up, you know, to, to play yen strength, I'd really want to see this taken out in, in the yen basket. And it's not going to be taken out tomorrow unless something very dramatic happens. Um, so, you know, I... I see these rallies as rallies to be sold, you know, in, in the end. Uh, but we need to 
have the right setup there as well. So if the market reacts positively to, to tomorrow's non-farm payroll report, you could look at pairing uh, either the Aussie or the pound against the yen. Okay, and that brings me to the pound. So the pound, uh, we, well, we, we've broken below support here, and although we have some short-term bullish momentum, you know, I, I'm not all that encouraged by the by the longer-term prospects of the pound here. Um, you know, we're, we're basically breaking above the 50-period moving average right now, but there's still a lot of wood to chop. Uh, if we can stabilize and base, you know, then I might look for an opportunity to buy the pound, but otherwise I'm cautiously expecting this uh, rally to, to kind of roll over. Uh, as far as momentum goes, the momentum indicators aren't giving me too much information. The reason I want to show you the pound basket is purely because of the velocity score that I was talking about uh, a little bit earlier and the fact that the pound did outperform today. Does it mean it has to keep outperforming? Not necessarily. So just be cautious. Just because the pound had a good day today does not mean it will have a good day tomorrow. Pick your spots, all right? I, I do want to show you this basket so you're, you're aware uh, of what I'm looking at, but the, the pound is actually not my favorite uh, asset currency to be holding on to right now. Um, however, the Aussie is very interesting. So if we look at the Aussie here, uh, this looks on the daily chart to have a little bit more room if we want to test that 50 period moving average. So from a shorter term trading perspective, that's rather encouraging. From the longer term, uh, from the on the shorter term time frames, here's what I'm looking at. We have what looks like a left shoulder, a head, and then a right shoulder to complete this inverted head and shoulder setup. Okay, love seeing that. Love seeing this moving average crossover to the upside. I'm cautiously bullish the Aussie. All right, now just remember the Aussie has been in a downtrend as well, um, but there might be enough short-term pop here for us to buy the Aussie and have it as an asset currency. What do we want to pair it against? Well, I, I think, you know, we did talk about the yen, but I think the Swiss franc and the euro might be better bets. Uh, so here the Swiss franc, we have a bearish moving average cross, and we might be pulling back to test this prior support level, so, uh, sorry, this prior resistance level, which might now work as support. You can see this was resistance uh, hemmed in prices in 2020 and then in 2022 and 20, late 2021 as well. So if we are going back to test the zone, that's more than enough room uh, for a short-term play on the Swiss franc. And then finally, I've got the Euro. I mean, this just looks, this looks so bearish. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see us retest uh, the 2022 lows in the euro basket. Uh, so I definitely like the euro to the downside. Not much more I have to say about that there. All right, so in conclusion, there is definitely the potential for whipsaw um, conditions to, to still exist. All right, the volatility in this market has been a sight to behold. Always keep in mind relative strength and weakness. Um, so yes, the pound had a good day, but just keep in mind, we're pushing major levels in currencies right now. Uh, specifically, I would say in the dollar, all right, and and uh, re really in the dollar, you know, just keep a very close eye on tomorrow's non-farm payroll report. Uh, the dollar has been in an incredible, credible uptrend over the last several several months. Let's see, uh, you know, let let's see how much how much more crowded the long dollar trade can get. Uh, so be careful out there tomorrow. Definitely expecting lots of volatility with the payroll report, and uh, for our Mavic traders. We'd love to see you in tomorrow morning's class. Thanks, everyone. That's it for me, and I'll see you next week.